We're not we're not gonna allow that deal to go. Let me take a call in the middle of my in, in the middle of my floor, but I'll take it. Hey, good hey, good afternoon. This, no, is, this Wyatt. is Wyatt. Who am I speaking with? Hey, it's Ender calling. How are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm sorry. What's your name? Ender. Ender. E N D E R. Hey, how you doing, Ender? Not too bad. Um. You know, you don't have to yell into the microphone, you know, it already amplifies your voice. Well, I'm amp I'm amp with the amplifier in the voice. What's going on? What's your thoughts on this, man? My uh, apologies. I, I don't I don't mean to holler. My fault, bro. My fault. I don't mean to holler. It's okay. It's okay. I understand. I'm basically, uh, the reason I said that off the bat is because I always start things off badly. The reason they call me Ender is because I'm one of Murky's minions, but I'm the one who sent in to end the streak. There's been a streak going where... Everyone said, let's start the show. Um, they've got a cold open hit every time. So they sent me in uh, to basically wreck everything. And, and I, so I never get it. If you're supposed to say, let's start the show, like, you're obviously not going to. Okay. All right. I tell you what, we about to start the show. I'll holler at you. All right, listen, next caller. This is what we're going to do. I don't know who Ender was, but he planned and he can go on somewhere. We're talking about real stuff over here. Ender's out of here. Forget everything that you think you know, because NEAS is now a show. Give it up for your host, Chris One. Hey everyone, Chris Dumb, or I mean Chris One here, and it's NEAS The Show. Wow, what a great one we have for you. But we actually sold ad space during the monologue this week, so my monologue is just an ad read. Do you love shirts? Do you love NEAS The Show? Well then, do I have the site for you? It's not even a store.com. Go and get your limited edition NEAS The Show t-shirts or the older NEAS Block Logo, Tech Head Terry, or Officer Steve shirts. You can go and support the channel and support being a good person. Is that good enough? All right, let's head over to the desk. Well, I'm glad I'm sitting down for this next news because it's quite somber. I'd like to announce the passing of Chris Three, our beloved producer who is found dead in a vacant lot. I can't believe they found him. Okay, you can't say stuff like that. We've talked about this. They're going to use that against you. I'm just saying that I am surprised they were able to locate the body. Okay, you really, really need to shut up. The trial is soon. But anyways, let's move on with the episode. It's a fantastic one this week, folks, as we've got calls from Daryl Kraft, conservative comedian, and our old friend Butch. First, though, the prank stars pranked so hard this week that there's only two other segments. They called our old friends JJ and Rudy. And then firstly, they reached out to Todd Starnes to offer condolences on the passing of Donald Rumsfeld. Check it out. You don't want them to pull your card because the prank stars, they prank hard. Uh, real quick, let's go to Dennis, Connecticut. Dennis got about 60 seconds. Oh, I'll I'll keep it short, Todd. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of upset about Rumsfeld dying. I was hoping you could pass a message along to him whenever. All right, uh, Dennis. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, but I will say this: Donald Rumsfeld. These crank callers, they kill me. They kill me. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld. They kill me. A great American patriot, and he passed away. Lived an incredibly long life. And um, he was a patriot. Uh, that's going to be a fun, fun day 
in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and that's where Travis is, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Travis, Travis welcome, welcome to, to, the, to the, program. the program. Hey, Todd, how's it going? It's going well. Thank you, Travis. What's on your mind? Uh, what's on my mind? Uh, Rumsfeld and Helen, you're going to meet him someday. <laughs> Wait, wait, now don't dump it. Don't we? Did we dump Travis? We dumped Travis. So uh, Travis is uh, Travis is one of these um, one of these leftists. I mean, the guy is sleaze. I don't know much about Travis, but I do know this: he lied to Grace Baker, our call screener, to get on the air. And Travis from Charlotte, North Carolina, who clearly was not raised right, uh, just made a complete fool of himself on national radio. By calling in and saying that we were going to hell and that Donald Rumsfeld was in hell. Donald Rumsfeld was in hell. Donald Rumsfeld was in hell. The only hell I can imagine is the personal hell Travis from Charlotte, North Carolina, must be living in, because this guy, and by and large, I you know, and I don't mean to paint with a broad brush, but these uh, prank callers like Travis, they're not prank callers; they're leftists. But they don't have to lie to me. They don't have to lie. But that says a lot about his character. Oh, yeah. Or lack of. But typically, these guys, they um, lurk in their parents' basements. They have no job. They're getting the cash from the government. They're lazy-ass people. And they sit around, and this is how they get their jollies in life. Among other things. And it's very unfortunate. So, Travis, uh, good luck to you. Um, You're probably going to have a miserable life. And I hate that for you. It doesn't have to be that way. But that's the path you chose. And we believe in freedom here in America and on the Todd Stearns Radio Show. And uh, if you want to be a, you know, a sleaze bucket for your entire life, then uh, have at it. God bless America. Area code 910. Hi, you're on the J.J. McCartney Show. Hey, J.J., how's it going? Good. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, I'm Bobby. I'm calling from North Carolina. I yeah. was wondering, could I get like a classic JJ Snap out of you? JJ Snap! Yeah, you're you're just a you're just a real comedian, aren't you? <laughs> you think you're smart? Do you think you're smart? Like a shirt? Yeah, that's like I said. Uh, you're just a real comedian. You 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 deserve your own special Olympics medal. It's what you what you deserve. You know, if you want to buy a shirt, just go. And you can buy a shirt there. Got it, moron. All right. Thank you very much for calling. It was great to have you on the show. Really, it was. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see who we're going to go to next here. Uh, well, no, that, that one's gone. Okay. Well, bye-bye. Thank you for calling. Have a nice life. You know, wish you nothing but the best, really, truly. So let's go to Griffin in Brooklyn. Griffin. Hey, hey, Rudy. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing okay, Griffin. How are you doing? Rudy, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. What would you like to doing know? Okay. So why why do you breathe so heavily directly into the microphone and make those weird noises? I mean, you're an old guy. You're probably not that healthy for crying out loud. But use a cough button or something, man. It just sounds awful. The show is audio exclusively. Well, why are you uh, listening? Why don't you go? Why don't you go do something useful like go to work or something like that? You jackass! <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! 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 This is why the country's in trouble. We got jackasses like that. What are you going to do? It um, it happens. Ladies and gentlemen, the showstoppers. <clears throat> Rumsfeld is in hell and you'll meet him someday. Don't even believe in that stuff, but it's funny to say. And it might ring true for you because you always pray. So the God you believe in would surely see it that way. 
conservative touring stand-up comedian Daryl Kraft made his debut last week and he's back this week and he sounds a little bit different and you're going to notice that he sounds different from week to week but just don't even concern yourself with this. Concern yourself with his fantastic conservative comedy. Check it out. Your next comedian tours all over the country. Give it up for Daryl Kraft. Caller, please, please give us give your, your first, first name, and, name state and state and join, and join the, the conversation. conversation. Well, my name is Daryl. I'm in uh, Florida as far as my state goes. Good, Daryl. Join join with Reba, Giuseppe, and me. Well, uh, thank you. I, I actually have a joke for you guys. Uh, uh, what what did the liberal comedy club owner say to the accomplished touring conservative comedian? <laughs> Give well, us. Well, well, the answer, the answer, of course, is nothing. Yes, 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 yes. They don't return the comedian's calls. They won't book them for any shows. It's just the way it is nowadays. This is, you're speaking even literally as being the case. Yes, I can well believe it. Yeah, I'm a, I am a touring, uh, you know, I should say I'm a touring uh, conservative stand-up comedian. Uh, my name is Daryl Kraft. Uh, then the craft is easy for me, is <laughs> sort of my tagline. Um, but but honestly, um, you know, things nowadays for a comedian like me, it's, it's not easy. And I, and I wonder if you guys see that. You know, the kids nowadays don't want to hear the edgy material. I feel like their, thin, their skin is how I messed that up, messed the joke up. Um, I feel like their skin is so thin that they're afraid that the edgy material will cut their skin because their skin is so thin and they, they can't handle the edge of something who could cut it potentially. Well, I think you make good points. Do you have questions or comments for Reba, Giuseppe, or me specifically? Well, I think you make good points. Yeah, I got a question. How come kids don't know what it's like to be in a line? They only know what it's like to be online. Well, I used to have to wait in lines to do various activities when I was younger, and all those activities would probably get me canceled in today's culture. You know what I'm saying, Jim? That's what I'm saying. I mean, honestly, free speech is a serious thing in our country. And, and, and where what does it say about our country if I can't do my racism jokes and my sexism jokes and my homophobia jokes? because they're going to make some orange-haired uh, kid butt hurt. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well said. Well said. Well said. Oh, I know it's outrageous. And, of course, the... If anyone knows well, the, that I'm looking for mics, I'm looking for open mics to hit. So if you know uh, Daryl Craft, comedian, touring stand-up comedian, I've got a bunch of credits. Uh, a lot of them are very iffy. All right, I'll see you guys later. Well, I'm, I'm very glad you called. Reba, what did you make of that? Uh, well, I'd like to see if Daryl would be willing to share his number with me so I can call him and perhaps have him come on my show later. Oh. Uh, I, I think uh, I think we need more laughter, and uh, I don't censor. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we need to laugh. You know, in fact, many people have healed their cancers by laughter alone. A lot of the times Butch calls really bad hosts, but sometimes he likes to call nice people too and just brighten up their day. I mean, he's such a nice guy. How can you not get your day brightened up by Butch? If you don't, then it's on you. Check it out. Well, he loves to talk, but he don't know Butch. He's your favorite caller and his name is Butch. That's a, that's a pretty lengthy story here you want to take your caller yeah, first we can because can. that okay let's yeah. let's take the caller first make sure we get through our story uh butch from homestead uh how are you doing today butch hey it's Butch. good to, good to hear you okay <laughs> very good but so how are you doing today and appreciate you calling into the I'm show a, i'm doing good i'm enjoying uh watch on the show um you guys are talking on a local um local uh, issues on the politics, but uh, sometimes the issues is national as well as even global. 
They they certainly are. And in, in in reference to uh, are you talking about uh, the uh, the candle collapse or we've been talking about a few topics here today as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Definitely been talking about a few topics. Um, how come where the guy go? I'm watching on a Facebook and the guy uh, disappear off of a screen and uh, it's just a you on the screen now. And, He's uh, still here. He's still here. We just we're switching around. Is, I think because I'm talking, so the he, camera can, went here. Can he hear me? He on sure. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Oh, you can hear me too. Yeah, modern technology, man, ain't it great? Marconi did a great <laughs> job know. with all that. Yeah, yeah, my friend Terry is loves that. Is loves it so much. Oh, when you when you and it just somebody made it go now. Somebody made it go now, and then make it so I see both. Yes, of you Eric's now. on there as well. So, so let me guess. Somebody you, made it go. Do you have a somebody comment? Somebody made it go when yes. When Butch said, uh, Butch said, oh, I can't see him, and somebody made it go for Butch. Isn't that I, how it is? Isn't that nice when people can help uh, work together it, on it? It you is. Gotta thing on his neck look like maybe um he could be a pastor or have a neck <laughs> issue well i don't know I'd, I'd like to think of myself as a high priest what do you think <laughs> i don't know i don't know who you are <laughs> that's all right man hey I listen you, but, is this a mint julep or a budweiser drink? morning for you butch no i don't drink alcohol oh, got you, people buddy. ask me that they say but you drink alcohol i don't i don't drink and never touch it i'm a teetotaler got you and I, what is it on your neck, though? Is it because um, cause it's just so hot? <laughs> well, actually, I, li- I live um, on a self-sustainable ranch. Um, we make our own power. We grow our own food. And because it's hot outside, I like to have a bandana so that I can wipe the, you know, wipe the sweat or using it in an emergency or whatever I need to. And it keeps the sun off of my neck because I'm an Irishman and I burn really easy. So There you go. How are you going to make your own power? What? <laughs> Yeah, no, we make no, our own. We on. make our no, we do. We make our own power. I have forty-four solar panels on the roof of my uh, dojo, which is a gym, and um, we uh, we have a thirty k battery uh, pack that it charges during the day. So when the sun goes down, I can go completely off grid. But don't tell FPNL that, because there <laughs> is a law that says that if you do not have a connection to the electric company even if you can make your own electric they will condemn your home really you are not allowed to have oh my occupancy goodness. i don't understand all of it but you're honestly one of my, one of the coolest guys i ever met and casey i love your <laughs> show and you as well but this guy is one of the coolest guys i ever met and hey man, maybe i'll leave right my too. phone number uh, to the producer i'll leave my phone number you got it and if um you want to call me at one time um just i'm over in homestead and i can come over to your farm and uh, help you do power loves to talk but he don't know much he's your favorite caller and his name is butch help me do power all right yeah, more exactly. power to the help people brother more power back. to the people <laughs> right on my alley thanks guys you thanks got it all, you Thank- all right man Bye. thanks for calling in, butch. <laughs> so we, we love to hear from our listeners but well, i'll uh, tell you what i'm usually i'm not used to being called something nice <laughs> <laughs> that made my day. I feel that better. bandana anyway. around yeah, your neck. I'll uh, tell you, it gets them every time. <laughs> it's just part of what I do. All right, it's time to check back in and see if anything ever came of that woman wanting to book Daryl Kraft on her show. Well, it turns out that it did. She booked him, and he was on. Here he is, and it's only his camera because she doesn't even have one, and it's ridiculous. Check it out. How do you want me to introduce you? From where? Just say Florida or what? Well, Homestead, I'm, uh, you know, I'm... Have they started you touring again yet? Well... It's been kind of slow? Yeah. Yeah. Safe to say that. (laughs) I mean, honestly, yeah, very. How many years have you been doing comedy? Uh, Uh, guess 14 years now. So if you can mute yourself until I introduce you, that'd be great. He is a conservative comedian living in Homestead, Florida. Daryl, welcome to the show. Say, Daryl, you're muted. Can you unmute, Daryl? Oh, there I am. I'm sorry. I'd forgotten that I was muted, but how are you? Um, How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me on the program. I am indeed very excited to get back uh, out there and uh, and tour again. But I'm just going to be checking my phone a little bit. I'm waiting to hear back about a corporate gig, speaking of which. How many years have you been doing stand-up comedy, Daryl? Uh, well, I I think I did tell you that before that we started. 14 well, years. my audience hasn't heard it yet. So oh, of course. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with 
uh, stand-up comedy. I'm just seeing that my hand is here on the screen there. Gatekeepers, they decide who gets what. Oh, they run the big shows. They do the big showcases. They do the, the TV stuff. And they'll, they'll use a lot of code words to... Uh, that mean basically you're a conservative and that's why they don't want to book you. They'll say you're a hack. That's a big one they'll use. You're a hack. You're a, you're unoriginal. Your material's unoriginal, Daryl. It's uh, ev Everybody's heard your material and the stuff you say a million times before and it's uh, it's what's called the hacky material. And what they mean by that is you, you, we're, you're conservative and we don't agree with that. Yeah. The craft is easy for me, but it's even been hard for me. I mean, what I'll do often is the host will come up and introduce me and I'll do about uh, two to three minutes roasting the host, which is kind of a funny thing to do at an open mic or something like that. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll start picking them apart. And if it's a woman, I'll say, you know, sexist kind of stuff about her. How, I'll, I'll highlight how she's a woman and, um, you know, negative stuff about that. But it's not sexist not, or misogynistic because I would do it to a man as well. It, you know, I would pick up, I would say that to a man as well. If they were somebody, you know, a person of color, I would mock that as well. And I have. And then and then I get this re reputation and I'm told, oh, you don't please don't come to our open mics anymore, Daryl. So what do you think about this comedian, Bill Cosby, that got released yesterday? Well, I mean, <laughs> no, he deserves to be in jail for the rest of his life. And it is unfathomable that he's been released from prison, truly. Um, but now that he's out, you know, we have to embrace him as one of the, you know, cons beloved conservative comedians. No, I don't have to embrace him at all. Okay, fair enough. Nothing back yet on the corporate, which is kind of annoying. I'll tell you who would have booked it already. Jason Pork. Who's <laughs> Jason Pork? He's a comedian. He's sort of a, a liberal... A uh, lefty comedian uh, who, you know, books everything. Everybody loves Jason Pork. And uh, meanwhile, you know, I'm, uh, I'm you know, I'm, uh, you know, can't, I'm having every, anything, you know? Yeah. So, uh, Daryl, you were telling me that you had some material that you wanted to share with the audience tonight. Are you familiar with roasts, uh, Beverly? Uh, of course I'm familiar with roasts. Do you have something on Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden? Oh, Nancy Pelosi. Hey, how much time you got? I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah, but that won't... But my... No. In this case, no. Um, my thing is about roasts and how if... Kids these days, when you tell them, "Hey, let's let's have a roast off," they they'll they pull out their freaking. Can I swear on this? No, I'd rather not. Okay, so they these kids pull out their freaking easy bake oven because they that's what they think a roast is to roast a uh, a like a roast like a roast that you would know. Do you know what I'm saying? Not really. I'm not following you at all. I just heard back from the corporate. They said um, they said I didn't get it, and that they were never considering me for it, and that they're not doing a show or of any kind, and that I should uh, not, uh, I guess, send them messages anymore. Oh wow! So, uh, who do you want to roast tonight? I actually do have a roast in the oven at the moment. Would I? Can I call you back? Okay. So that was Daryl, folks, and uh, we will. Thanks so much for watching, and I'm being told I have to remind you and reiterate that you should go to notevenastore.com, and uh, the link, I guess, is in the description. Uh, also, uh, you should head over to patreon.com slash notevenashow. Folks, there's a fantastic Patreon episode this week. Officer Steve got himself into a little bit of trouble. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Chris Tu, uh, do you have a lawyer yet? And may I suggest, and they wanted me to say this because they love callbacks, may I suggest Dim Whitley? And that name doesn't even ring a bell for me, but maybe for some people it does. Anyways, thanks. Bye.